have a campaign where we might be calling back in to customers who have left mm -hmm. to see if, if the grass is truly greener on the other side. Yeah. Um, I, have, I have some ideas on how we might approach that, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Sure. Do you want to give me your ideas first or do you want to give me my thought me to give you my thoughts first? Uh, I'll take yours first. Okay. Mine to keep it really simple. Somebody has left the organization. Do you know on these people that have left the organization how long ago they left the organization? It will be varied. Okay, varied. All right, fine. Um, <clears throat> do we know, I'm assuming the answer to this is varied, but I'll ask the question anyways. Do we know why they left? Varied. Okay. All right, so how I would reach out is if it's been an extended period of time, and by extended period of time in my end, uh, my opinion, two to three months, okay, so 60 to 90 days, I would lead with the, hey, uh, not sure if you remember us or we've worked with you in the past, I, I wanted to reach out to you personally, and then simply, I've got an idea I'd love to get your opinion on, can you call me on my mobile? right? We don't need to be super salesy on that first voicemail, okay? On that first call, hey, I, wanted, I know you'd worked with us in the past. I wanted to reach out to you personally. I did have a couple ideas about some new things with bump X, Y, and Z. Does it make sense for me to email you over something, right? And then step into the call that way. But what we don't want to do is lead that call with, hey, Nancy, I know you'd worked with us in the past. We've made some big changes to the organization, right? Calling to see if I can have five minutes of your time to explain what's new over here at Easton University. Nope, I'm all good, right? Some of the time, if you just, I don't even want to say fall on your sword, but just be honest. Hey, it's been a while since we've talked to you. I know you've worked with us in the past. I wanted to step in here personally, let you know we've got some ideas that I'd love to get your opinion on. I've got some tips that would help you whether you came back and worked with us or not. Uh, give me a call on my mobile, 720-660-3202. I'm at least going to give that person the benefit of the doubt and, and mm -hmm. call them back. And then what I would hope is that your team or you or whoever's making the call honors that promise that you made in the voicemail and doesn't start selling them when they call back. Your team, everybody on this call has valuable information that they can give an ex-client whether that ex-client comes back or not. Right? One of the things that we're noticing is bump, 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 bump. Are you guys seeing this? Right? So that's how I would do it. Um, if what you want to, thoughts? go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to ask what, you're, what are your thoughts around, um, you know, did the transition go the way, these are big changes that mm -hmm. these people mm -hmm. will have made. Mm -hmm. You know, did the transition go the way that you expected? Is there anything that we can do um, as it relates to any type of continued relationship that we might have with you just to, to make sure that that transition went as smoothly as possible? I'm not totally opposed to that. However, when I have a singular conversation with you, you left my organization, you went to somebody else, and I'm, hey, how did it go, right? It, it's okay. And we're having a singular conversation, okay? It's very easy for them to get defensive, it's very easy for them to get combative, and it's very easy for them to not share information with us. So if we simply introduce a third party, third idea, things that we've seen with other clients that have left, it will allow us to triangulate on that third party, that idea or those third people without them feeling like it's an interrogation. And the difference is, hey Nancy, call in to see if your uh, transition over to Acme went well, wanted to make sure they were able to do everything for you. Yup, I'm all good. Done. Hey, Nancy, I've got an idea I'd love to get your opinion on. Uh, can you give me a call on my mobile? 720-660-3202. Yeah, hey Matt, it's Nancy calling you back. Hey, thanks for calling me back. So, I know you were with us and you transitioned over to Acme. Uh, it's inter I was thinking about you this morning because we were doing a little uh, summit conversation uh, with some of our clients and some of Acme's clients and one of the things that they were telling us is people that have transitioned to other providers uh, although it seemed really great in the beginning and that it would ha happen seamlessly what they were seeing is some of those things were 
either done behind schedule, taking a lot longer, hadn't been done, or the deal had changed altogether. And I was just curious and thinking about you guys, being that you have some expertise and some firsthand knowledge on that, is that anything that you guys have seen with your transition? A little bit. Is there anything, and I don't want you to share, and for sure I won't share your personal uh, information with you know, with the group, but I, I'm just curious for my own benefit, what are some of those things that you were seeing? Well, I mean, as long as we're keeping it confidential, uh, they changed the pricing on us completely. Right? When, when you say they changed the pricing, can you give me a specific example? Now we're pointing at a third party and it's much easier for you to share information with me. But if I just come right at you and say, hey, I wanted to make sure you were good, the way you're going to feel that is, well, now you're trying to sell me something. And if they've been burned by this other company, they don't know the difference between us and our promises. Are they empty promises or legit promises? And the company that burned them, right? It's just a bunch of salespeople telling them a bunch of stuff to get their business. So if we simply triangulate and say, you know, one of the things that clients are seeing in the industry when they transition is promises not being met. Things, scopes not being scoped right, pricing changes. I'm trying to gather some stuff. I'm trying to put together a helpful little kind of resources on this. I'd love to, I'd, I'd appreciate it. If you can give me some of your insights, I would really appreciate it. I'd owe you a favor on my end. I'd certainly keep everything that we said confidential. Is this anything, are you guys seeing any of this? And now that person's going to be honest with you. And I think you're going to be in a, it's the same question. We just need to, let them know other people are seeing this and at the end of the day, we would love to help them in any way we can, but if they could just be open and honest with us, it would really help us in knowing what's going on out there and we'd owe them a favor, right? I like to do business with people that talk to me like that, right? That are like, hey, can you be honest with me on this? And you know, I don't know how I'll pay it back, but I'll owe you a favor on this and I will certainly you know, not use your name. I'm not going to, you know, go out and say you guys said this, but I'm just curious to know what is your transition been like? That person I think is going to be a lot more open and honest with you. Make sense? Yes. Thank you. That was helpful. Yeah. Same question. Just pointed at a third party. Sales reps, managers, business owners, entrepreneurs, what I'm about to tell you, oh, this is going to hurt, but trust me, it will be well worth it. I want you to think back to that excitement you had when you first got started. Maybe it was your first day. You thought about all of the lives that you were gonna change with your amazing product, your business, your service, your solutions. And hey, let's be honest here, you were gonna make a lot of money in the process of helping people, helping businesses change their lives. But it didn't work out exactly that way, did it? If you're anything like me, if you're anything like most people in sales, you found it was just a little bit more difficult to close those deals than you thought, or maybe you're struggling right now. Now I warned you, this is the part that's gonna hurt, but in order for this to work, you and I need to be honest with each other. I want you to think about all the reasons that you're not hitting your targets, all the reasons you're not making the sales that you had anticipated making. Is it the economy, your competition, your territory, your pricing, maybe it's your manager, your product, your service, your solution. Here's the part that's gonna hurt. There's a 94% chance it is none of those, and it's time you face reality. The reason why you have to work so hard just to close a single deal has nothing to do with the economy, nothing to do with your competition, your territory, your manager, your product, your price, your service. The reason why it's so hard for you is you simply haven't learned a better sales process. But wait, you've had sales training from your company. Yeah, I did too. You've read some sales books. I read just about every single one of them. Or maybe you're saying to yourself, well, I was always born a salesperson. Nobody is born knowing how to sell more than they're born knowing how to speak Cantonese or fly an F-22 fighter jet. And by the way, the right sales process is a lot easier to learn than a language or flying an airplane, but you still have to learn it. My name is Matt Easton. I'm the founder of Easton University. And if you'll let me coach you, I can show you how to sell more than you've ever imagined without being pushy, without being manipulative, without following some super complex system where you're spend more time trying to figure out what stage your deal is in. 
than actually closing deals. If you will let me coach you, you will never ever, ever, ever find yourself blaming the economy, your products, your price, your manager, your territory, your competition again, because you're gonna be in total control of the sales process and the outcomes. I've devoted my life to unlocking the perfect sales process and I wanna coach you the same way I've helped thousands of other people in the exact same position that you are right now sell a reported 3.47 billion, yeah, that's billion with a B, over the last 12 months. I've been where you're at right now. I know how to help you. I can show you in just a matter of minutes what will take you years of trial and error to learn on your own. Now, if you've made it this far, but you're saying to yourself, it can't be that simple. Just trying a new sales process alone will not get me to where I wanna go. I know exactly what you're feeling. I said those exact same things, and I was wrong. Having the right sales process changed absolutely everything for me. So I want you to do me and yourself this favor and spend just a minute or two over at EastonUniversity.com checking out what we've built. Now, if you spend a couple minutes and you decide that our coaching can't help you, it can't help you change everything about your career, everything about your life, no harm, no foul. You can continue to do things the way you're doing them right now. But just imagine, what if you head over to EastonUniversity.com right now and it connects with you? What if it is that simple? Suddenly, everything starts to make sense and everything changes for you, your career, your income, your goals, your company. You start heading in the direction you always thought you could. Isn't it worth taking a couple minutes and seeing if that might be the case? Easton University is more than a platform. It's more than live coaching with me. It's your future and you and your future are worth it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad you and I have met each other and I look forward to seeing you over at EastonUniversity.com right now.